What Nintendo game do I have framed and hanging on the wall of my living room? In today's episode, we're going to look at 10 more games in my NES collection. And the last one is going to be a big one. So this is going to be volume 9 of my NES collection series. And in this episode, we're looking at games 81 to 90. And jumping right into it, game number 81 on my list is going to be Mega Man 2. Now, I've talked about Mega Man 2 in other episodes. I love Mega Man 2. I love the sprites. I love that it feels like I'm playing like a cartoon. It's such a cool game. I love that you can select different levels, different characters, play through it in kind of different orders, and use some of the weapons that you get from those glass guys to be able to beat the next guy you have to face. I love this one. I think the Mega Man series is such a fun series. And this one is definitely my personal favorite. I know a lot of people love a lot of different Mega Man games in the series. This one's just awesome. I have a lot of sentimental value behind this one. That nostalgic feel comes from this one for me because I remember renting it. I remember playing it. There's a video on my channel where I talk about the games I used to rent when I do my 500 subscriber one. Check that one out if you can. It's not too far away there. So here we go. Number 81, Mega Man 2. Number 82 on my list is going to be Life Force. Now, Life Force is kind of a hidden gem type of game. Super fun, super great game. Now, this game was brought to us by Konami, and it's originally called Salamander, and then it was reissued as a, with the rename of Life Force in North America and like a second version. This is actually a spinoff to the Gradius series. It's a super fun game. I love playing me some Life Force. It is really hard. I'm not very good at those shoot 'em up games. This one is just a scrolling shoot 'em up because it flops between that vertical scrolling shoot 'em up and that horizontal scrolling shoot 'em up, which is really cool. It's really fun. You're going to want to do a lot of memorization on this one. Took me a lot to get to the levels I did on this, but this one is super fun. And I love the box art on this. Like the box art on this one is super cool. I don't know why I enjoy that so much. It's got like that Konami, like Contra look to that box. Such a cool game. Really a lot of fun. I love you can play two players in this one. It is super, super fun. Really interesting game. Totally worth playing if you can find it. Game number 83 on my list is we're going back to those black box games and it's going to be golf. Just golf. It's all titled is golf. This one's brought to us by Nintendo themselves in those black box games. Now there was developers from HAL Laboratories involved in this one. And this is pretty cool because originally they didn't think they were going to be able to get a whole golf course into one of these cartridges. And in this one, Nintendo really set the bar on where golf games were gonna be, kind of for that foreseeable future, with that like three button press swing, that bar at the bottom, you hit it once to start the swing, you gotta hit it on the other end, then you need to hit that target point in the middle for that last hit. Otherwise you're gonna get a slice or a hook or something like that, it's gonna happen to you. Now, golf is pretty unforgiving. This one can be a little rough. You miss by a little bit, and that ball is going wherever it wants. I'm out of bounds a lot of the times when playing this one. You need to kind of base your club selection based on the distance it's telling you you are away. It doesn't have any of those markers where it tells you this is like as far as this club will hit, which throws me off quite a bit because I, I don't mind golf games on the Nintendo and stuff like that, but... This one is pretty unforgiving for me. I, I really suck at this version of golf. Cool thing about this one is this is actually one of the top 10 best-selling Nintendo games out there. I think it's actually number 10 at like 4 million. Like, that's, that's pretty cool for a black box golf game. And I know everyone is always wondering, is that Mario? There is some sources out there that kind of say this is Mario. This is actually player two. Player one, he's got a white outfit on. There's some really cool ideas out there if this is Mario or not. We kind of think it is. It's always going to be Mario to me, even though kind of maybe doesn't really look like him 100%. Now, I don't have a lot of memories of playing this one as a kid. 
never had this one. We had that NES Open Golf. I definitely played that a little bit. Didn't have this one. Again, really unforgiving. To me, I, if you have some cool memories of golf, this is probably like a dad game back then. I'm sure a lot of dads wanted to play this one. Probably if they played golf or if they didn't, this could be, have been an interesting one. And I think this is kind of one of those dad games where they would have sat down and tried to play it. Number 83 on my list is going to be golf. Now, number 84 on the list is going to be Commando. Someone's going to pay. No, not not the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. This actually came out a few months before the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, which is probably good because I didn't have to deal with any of those naming issues that probably would have come from it. Now, Commando is a Capcom title. This was an arcade game that they ported over to the NES. And they actually did a pretty good job on this one. It doesn't look quite as good as the arcade version, but I mean, they had limited resources for this. Fun thing about Commando for me is my kitchen table, in my game house here is actually a cocktail commando arcade currently it's not working it was on for a few years and i shut it off and now i can't get it to turn back on so i actually have to haul it to the city and get someone there to repair it because i don't know enough about electronics to not electrocute myself trying to fix that cocktail arcade game so that's really cool to me i've played a lot of the arcade version of this because again it used to be in my kitchen right in my dining room i could sit there and play commando on the arcade this is like i said a really good port of that arcade game i like that they added the fact that when you throw your grenades you can actually blow some stuff open and you end up going down into these like secret areas you can track down more prisoners to set free get more points there's also upgrades down on there that you can pick up i think that's a really cool feature i like that they did that with this port they didn't just take it port it over and use it they actually changed it up a little bit made it a little more fun it is just a four stage sequence it just rotates through having those additional things to track down that's fun that's fun to be able to find that kind of stuff in these games and go adventuring in these ones a little bit now commando is going to be one of those vertical shoot 'em up style games but the cool thing about commando is it's not forced scrolling so it's not going to push you forward which leads to you kind of having to deke and dodge now other than a little bit of sprite flicker on this one it's pretty good i do like this i don't like that i get hung up on some of the background items like the palm trees and stuff like that i'll get caught up on that and then i'll get killed it's still a super fun game if you haven't played commando either this version or the arcade version it's a lot of fun i really enjoy commando number 84 for my list is gonna be commando number 85 on my list is gonna be 1943 the battle of midway now this is cool this is kind of set in world war ii and the battle of midway is actually a pretty historical event that took place that you're kind of involved in with this game which is cool that's a neat thing they probably didn't need that because the gameplay is pretty good it's worth playing even without them throwing that little bit in there which was nice of them to do for that now this is a capcom game and it is done better than how micronics did 1942 which again was a capcom game that micronics ported over to the nes capcom took a hold of this one and really did some fun things with it now there is an arcade version of this that you can play two players this one's only one player which I, I kind of sad that it isn't two players because that two player mode on the arcade does look like it'll be a lot of fun. Now 1943 has got some really fun animation to it. It's also got a really good soundtrack, especially in comparison to the beeping we got in 1942. This one's a really fun game. This is a game. This is another one of those good ports that Capcom did. What I like about this one is that it's not like a single hit death. You're going to have an energy meter at the bottom. It's going to basically be your fuel. It's E and then it's got some numbers. Now, fun thing about this one is flying, you use it up. You're using that up. You get hit, it takes them off there. You can pick up other items. You'll take out the red planes and they'll come up with, it'll be like a POW symbol most of the time. Now, if you shoot that, you can change that symbol. And you can actually get upgraded energy tanks, upgraded weapons, more power, 
a whole bunch of really fun items that you can change that to. Now you only have one life, but you can continue and this does have a password system, which is really good because this has got like 23 levels in it. Number 85 on my list is gonna be 1943, The Battle of Midway. Number 86 on my list is gonna be Mission Impossible. Now Mission Impossible is a really interesting game. This is one of those ones where I started playing it and I was like, oh, man, this is, this is cool. This has got a bunch of different things to it. This is gonna be an Ultra title, so it's technically Konami, it just released under that Ultra umbrella. And this is based off of the 1980s TV show, not the 70s TV show, and not the Tom Cruise movies. <laughs> I think if you're gonna be a really good stunt double, you have to really become one with the actor. You have to walk like the actor, uh, talk like the actor, uh, legally change your name to sound like the actors. This is a really cool game. I like the fact that it jumps around between like different types of levels. This first level is kind of long. It's good because you're figuring stuff out in that first level, but you gotta be careful because if you end up killing a pedestrian, like just a regular civilian, which is what I did the first time I ever played this, you immediately lose that character. Now you can swap between three different characters in this one, kind of in that Ninja Turtles style of game. Swap through them whenever you want, press start, swap over to the other one. They all have different abilities and different attacks which is fun and cool. Now there's gonna be six levels in this one and it's gonna swap back and forth. Like I said, level one is gonna be long and kind of difficult, you're learning the game. Level two is a really cool like boat level and then there's actually like a skiing level which is extremely difficult. And then the last level is long and really hard. But this game is fun. You're gonna to wanna to be careful in this one because it's got some sparse health out there. There's not a lot to find. So make sure you're giving it to the right character when you do find it. But this is gonna be a really fun and interesting title. This is one that you could have a lot of fun figuring out, I think. Number 86 on my list, Mission Impossible. Number 87 on my list is gonna be Ice Hockey. This has got that black box feel to it, but not the black box look to it. This is a really fun game. I think a lot of people have a lot of fun memories of this one. I have a friend that kicks butt at ice hockey. So good at it, which is really impressive to me because I'm not very good at ice hockey. Now this one's actually interesting because you get to pick your teams and that's actually based on the region. So if you get a different region cartridge, you'll have different teams you can select. The North American version has Canada, US. I'm gonna play as Canada when I'm playing it, obviously. Now I'm gonna get to play as one of the players on the ice and the goalie at the same time, kind of simultaneously. I'm gonna press B to select through the other players. There's gonna be like four skaters on the ice with me and then the goalie. The other team's gonna be coming at me. You can play one to two players in this one and it's really a bare bones version of hockey, but it's extremely fast, which makes it so much fun. And after you select your team, you actually get to pick the players you have on it. There's three different versions of the players you can play as. There's like a tall, skinny guy. He's gonna be super fast, really good at the face-offs, but his shots are gonna be kind of not as powerful. The goalie is gonna be able to catch those ones really easy. He's also gonna take a tumble if he gets hit basically by any other player. There's gonna be kind of a shorter guy, kind of looks just like your average hockey player, and he's just that. He's kind of good at everything. He's not great at everything, but he's just good at everything. And then there's kind of a hefty guy, and he's really strong. Super bad at those face-offs, but he's got a really powerful shot, and you can bowl through basically every other player out there because he has that weight and power behind him. I think that's really cool. You can select however you want. You can build your team however you want, and then you can play. And something that I really love, really fun for me, is the Zambonis after period two. I think that part of the game is so funny and so much fun. I mean, I'm not even doing anything. I'm just watching Zambonis and I'm enjoying every second of it. Ice Hockey is gonna be number 87 in my NES collection. Number 88 on my list is gonna be Silent Service. Now, this is a submarine game. It's a submarine simulator game. And when they say simulator, they really mean simulator. This is gonna take place in like the South Pacific, during World War II. And the ad that we saw on TV for this made it out to be so cool. 
cool. I remember seeing the ad for Silent Service and thinking, I need a submarine in my life. In Silent Service, the submarine simulation video game from Ultra. First, you gotta find them. Then, if you're up to the challenge, you've gotta get them in range. And if you're good enough, you'll put them on the ocean floor and live to tell about it. Find them, chase them, sink them in Ultra's Silent Service, the submarine simulation for Nintendo that puts you in command. Honestly, I thought there was going to be a lot more submarines in my life as an adult when I was a kid because they were everywhere back then. Bad had this really cool thing where it was like, find them, chase them, sink them. That's what I wanted to do. I never owned this as a kid. I never got to have the fun of not realizing that this is a simulator. I don't think I would have played this as a kid. You really need to pay attention to what is going on in the game. And it is really hard. I, I can't barely figure it out now. You're going to want to definitely use the practice mode. And you're for sure going to need the manual for this one. You're going to want to pay attention to what you're doing and look at the manual. Another interesting thing with this is you actually need to use both controllers. Because when you have the periscope up, one controller is going to turn the periscope. The other controller is going to turn the submarine. Now you're gonna have unlimited machine gun rounds in this one when you're attacking those other ships, but you're only gonna have limited torpedoes. So you're gonna to wanna to kind of use those sparingly. Definitely wanna to try to hit those ships with a torpedo and then light them up with the machine gun and sink them. Another cool thing in this one is if you hold A, you can actually dump like debris and oil behind you and pretend you got sunk and then hope like the destroyer goes away. There's a lot of different things in this, again, because this is like a Sid Meier's game originally and ported over to the Nintendo. This is a simulator, more of a hardcore simulator than I think a lot of us kids thought it was going to be, especially when we saw that awesome commercial back in the day. And number 88 in my NES collection is going to be Silent Service. Number 89 in my NES collection is going to be Bases Loaded 2, the second season. Now, this one is a little faster than the original Bases Loaded. Cool thing about this one is when Bases Loaded came out, the first one, it really changed the way we saw baseball games. And with baseball being like America's sport back in that time, this one probably was loved by a lot of people. I know the first one was huge. The second one was probably just as desired because everyone that wanted to play those baseball games was ready for that. We were watching movies like that, Angels in the Outfield, The Rookie, movies like that were coming out. And as kids, I wanted to play Sandlot. I wanted to be in the Sandlot. It had those different views. This one uses the nine run rules, so we never over like those 12 innings. Honestly, these games, the bases loaded games, I think are loved by a lot of people. And I wonder if a lot of people went back and played them now, if they would still love them. Because honestly, they're kind of hard and they're a little difficult for me. But honestly, I know nothing about baseball other than the fact that I wanted to play it on a sandlot when I was a kid. Number 89 on my list is going to be Bases Loaded 2, the second season. Number 90 on my list is going to be that one that I have framed hanging on the wall in my living room. I do have a video about this. You probably haven't watched it because it doesn't have a lot of views. But this is going to be... Bucky O'Hare. I have Bucky O'Hare framed in my living room. CIB, manual, game, box, everything's here in this one. This one is such a fun game. I really loved Bucky O'Hare. The toys, the cartoon, it was like super edgy back then. It was something I wanted to watch. And honestly, I didn't get to watch a lot of it. I did have a couple of the toys because I think they were in like the discount bin when my mom got them for us. But the game is so much fun. I picked this one up at like a thrift store. I got it for like $60 in the box back then. This was like 10 years ago at least. Probably one of my best finds so far in the NES collection. And it's such a fun game. It is gonna be a really difficult game, but it's super fun. It's kind of got that Mega Man feel to it. You're gonna need to rescue your crew members and then you can actually swap to them and use them. You're gonna wanna do the green planet first. Do the green planet before you do the blue planet. Otherwise you can't do the blue planet. Fun thing about this one is you're gonna need to use those characters you get because every one of them can do a different thing, which makes it so you can use them to get further into the levels. Like maybe you couldn't get through the first time you tried it. If you can't get through a level, go back, try a different planet, rescue another crew member, and then go and try to push through that one that you figured out. 
this is going to be another one of those ones with those power meters and be aware every character shares your life meter so you don't get fresh life just because you swap to another character like some of these other games but it does have a password system so it is a little forgiving there and the fact that it's based off that cartoon series i love that i love the games that took a good cartoon and made a better game out of it because we got a lot of stuff on the nintendo where it was licensed games and they just weren't very good because they didn't have care and attention to make that licensed game be a fun game they just had the license they slapped it on anything sent it out the door and said have fun out there so number 90 on my list is gonna be my framed my one of my prized possessions currently bucky o'hare oh cib in box <laughs> and it's, this has got to go back on the wall. I got to get it back out there and hang it up. Now, I didn't have a lot of these ones as a kid. A couple of them I definitely played as a kid. But I want to hear about your childhood. I want to know what games you played from this list as a kid. Or as an adult that you have fond memories of. If you played Life Force 2 players with your brother and had a blast doing it, I want to know about it. Tell me about it because that's the funnest thing about going through this collection. Is getting to share it with you and having you share back with me. Memories and adventures of playing these games. It's so much fun. Fun. That's what I love about nostalgia.